So DLSS is finally here in Tarkov, something that a lot of people have been waiting a long time for. But the truth is, you may not even know what it is. So today we're going to be having a look at not just what DLSS is, but also how it functions. We're also going to be comparing a wide variety of different settings across a bunch of different resolutions to see if it's even worth running. I'm going to be explaining the process along the way, as well as whether your card is applicable to run it or not. Stick around and find out, is DLSS something that Tarkov really needed, or was it just a big waste of time? So first of all, what even is DLSS? It actually stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling, and it's a setting that's only applicable to a certain amount of people. Unfortunately for you people out there that have AMD Radeon cards, this technology is not yet available to you, but you will have a replacement eventually called FSR down the line. And you can see plenty of videos out on YouTube describing how FSR works. However, for you NVIDIA boys, not absolutely every single one of you will be able to use DLSS. You actually have to have a certain type of architecture in your card. And this is generally the RTX nomenclature. Well, generally, there is a certain line of graphics cards that have these things called tensor cores in them, and you need these cores to be able to run DLSS. And all of those sort of cards up in the generation, so the 20 series, the 30 series, and all of the newer cards will be able to use this technology. Unfortunately, if you have a 900 or a 10 series graphics card for NVIDIA, you will not be able to use this technology. So what even is DLSS anyway? Well, it actually stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling. And I could go on and use a bunch of jargon that would probably confuse the hell out of you. So I'm going to try and explain it in a way that's really easy to understand. So I guess it's kind of known across everyone that a lower resolution means higher FPS. And a lot of the times when you go to a lower resolution, your game doesn't look as good as it should. DLSS sort of dances around the fine line of having both better FPS and a nicer looking image quality. So in a roundabout kind of way, it takes your resolution and then it shrinks it. With that shrinking, it then uses an AI trained program using the tensor cores in your graphics card to fill in the details. The reason that this is really good is because generally when you increase the resolution, you get a lot more sharpness and things like anti-aliasing will give a lot of flickering in the distance. You guys might've noticed this, especially with things like FXAA. The awesome thing about DLSS is that it plays both roles. Not only does it give you better performance, but it also actually smooths out the corners and will actually basically take over the role of anti-aliasing. And it does a way better job. You'll notice in all these demonstrations that especially around the corners of objects, you'll notice a lot less flickering and way better edges. And this is actually a really big deal because when you're in RAID, that flickering in the distance can look like a person and it's one of the most annoying things about the anti-aliasing in Tarkov. So because it does the job of anti-aliasing, you won't actually have to use anti-aliasing in the game after you've applied DLSS because it now takes over the role of doing that. Also, you get about three different options in Tarkov. You have quality, balanced and performance. Now quality does a little bit of downscaling and then it does a little bit of AI training to mix in some of the details itself. Balanced is about a half resolution and does a little bit more aggressive of a downscale and a little bit more of an AI input. And as you can guess, performance is the heaviest one with about a 50% resolution reduction. This means that the AI is then doing a lot more work, but because of this, you're actually getting much more FPS. I did want to point out that though, if you do run DLSS, you are going to see better performance in the 4K or 1440p range. But before we get into the comparisons, let's talk about how you actually turn it on. So how do you actually turn on DLSS in the first place? Well, actually you need to make sure that you have updated drivers. You can either do this through GeForce Experience or go to the NVIDIA website and download the most recent drivers for your graphics card. After you've done that, you want to boot up Tarkov and make sure you've updated to the new version, 12.12.15. Now, once we go into our graphics settings, we're going to have a couple different options. We're going to go ahead towards anti-aliasing and we're going to make sure this is off. After we've done that, we're going to make sure that we have resampling on one times off 
And then we're going to go towards NVIDIA DLSS, where there should be a drop down if you have an applicable graphics card. Before we get into the comparisons, however, I did want to point out that I have a specific rig. So I'm going to let you know my settings as well as the specs of my system for the test here today. So for my settings, I have actually basically got absolutely everything on max. I really wanted to push my graphics card as hard as possible to see what I could get out of it, especially with DLSS on. I've got my textures on high and I've also got my shadow quality on ultra. Object LOD quality on 4, even though generally I run 2.5. I got my visibility all the way up and I've actually got HBAO on colored very high. I've got SSR off as I believe it's horrible and I've got anisotropic filtering on per texture. NVIDIA reflex low latency on on and boost and I've also got grass shadows, Z blur turned on and all the others turned off. I'm also running post effects and I do have some pretty light post effects as I like the image quality and I think it's kind of applicable to a lot of you out there as a lot of you are probably running post effects as well. For my system specs I did want to point out that I'm running a bit of a baller system. Now this actually will depend on the graphics card that you have so obviously not all the results here today will be exactly the same but I am using a quite a high end rig. For my RAM, I've got 64 gigs of CL16 3600MHz G-Skill Trident. I've also got an RTX 3090 ROG Strix OC. This is a pretty high-end graphics card as well. And for my CPU, I have a Ryzen 9 5950X. Those are, those are basically the sort of things you need to know. I do have Escape from Tarkov installed on a Samsung 980 Pro, which is a gen 4 nvme ssd all right well, so with that out of the way let's have a look at some of the comparisons across a bunch of different maps so we decided to actually test it out by going to the water treatment plant and here we can see the three resolutions the main ones in the game without dlss and we'll definitely notice on the far left that 1920 by 1080p has the most amount of fps and this isn't really a huge surprise is it really 4k on the far right has the lowest but it's not by much and there's a few different reasons for this mainly because i decided to put as much as i physically could on the graphics card to try and make a fair comparison here if we actually have a look at 1920 by 1080p across the two versions that we get we get balanced and quality we'll notice that dlss off definitely has slightly lower fps but the difference between quality and balanced is really interesting what I do believe here is that quality is actually only a tiny tiny bit worse than balance but the difference in image quality is huge meaning that quality is so much better for 1920 by 1080p than balanced especially to do with the shimmering in the distance. The trade-off in frames is only about 2 to 3 max and even in online raids doesn't make a huge difference. When it comes to 1440p it's really close. DLSS on the far left without it being on is definitely worse in performance. The funny thing though however with higher end graphics cards is having it on quality is actually much better. If you do want to get a little bit more performance especially in the 20 series cards I would consider balanced or performance. However the trade off in visuals in performance compared to balanced is definitely not worth it so I would actually settle on balanced being the best option for 1440p. Now 4K is the only resolution where we look at quality and then performance and we can actually see a bit of an actual solid difference between the two. The main thing being that performance was definitely a lot more solid and more stable in its frame times. This is something you can't actually see here but something that I did measure. I think in 4K performance is definitely the way to go whereas ultra performance the loss in image quality is so much that you get a lot of shimmering and a lot of problems at the distance. So I definitely would recommend performance for 4K. We also decided to look at anti-aliasing between the different types and you'll notice on the far left that off definitely looks a lot sharper and a lot more jaggedy and kind of hard to look at compared to FXAA and TAA. FXAA is a good option if you're not running DLSS especially in 1080p but TAA looks leagues better than the other two for sure. I did want to point out though that if you do want to use TAA still and you don't find that DLSS is right for you, TAA High is definitely the best option here. It's nice and smooth and it's pretty good other than the fact it can add a little bit of blurriness. If we look at DLSS, we're going to have a look at between quality, balanced performance and ultra performance. What you'll notice is the main differences actually come in the barbed wire. 
you can definitely see a difference between the fidelity of the barbed wire and also the tower in the distance. These are the biggest difference makers in my opinion and you can see a lot more shimmering in the performance and ultra performance. This is because you're sacrificing a lot of resolution here and this will add a lot of shimmering which is kind of what you want to avoid. That's why I believe quality and balanced are the best two types of DLSS and you probably shouldn't stray towards performance unless you really really are having a hard time. However it's not all sunshine and rainbows when it comes down to DLSS. There are a huge amount of problems that I've seen with this actual technology, especially in Tarkov and some things that I noticed when I was doing some testing. The first one and the most obvious is ghosting, and this can actually be notably seen by looking at birds. And I know Vox, what are you, a bird watcher? This is a Tarkov channel for God's sake. But actually just hear me out. I decided to film some birds and I actually decided to use DLSS performance. Now birds are a great example because they're moving really quickly. And we can actually see the technology of DLSS here in action. You can see the past frames and the current frame also being blended into the next frame past that. And you can see a little bit of the ghosting that I'm talking about. Things like TAA high actually look a lot better. And you can notice that the ghosting and also the image sharpening looks much, much better. And this is one of the actual biggest problems with DLSS. Another huge problem is night vision. You probably can't actually use night vision with DLSS on any sort of mode, especially when you use cheaper night vision goggles. I actually tested this out with a bunch of different settings, different types of DLSS, and I noticed that the worst types of night vision goggles, the more cheap ones, especially the ones that are really grainy, made this weird effect where it was almost like your gun was ghosting and it played around with the lighting in a really strange way. This is a huge bug and I've actually already reported it to Battlestate Games. Hopefully we can get this fixed and I'm not really sure what the solution will be. Maybe with a couple more updates we'll see a lot more smoothness in this. However, if you are doing night raids, I would recommend turning DLSS off. A really good way to get around it is to use the expensive night vision like the GNPVGs or turn down your sharpness as much as possible. Another notable problem is the ghosting in the sights. There is a lot of this happening and it can actually be really distracting. Sometimes when you're ADSing, especially with finer optics, you'll notice a little bit of ghosting in the movement of the sights. This is actually particularly pronounced with the TAC-30 and other tight burst dots. You can also see this actually in the Vortex Razor, one of my personal favorite scopes. And it gets much worse, obviously, in performance and ultra performance if you have 4K. If you are running performance in 1440p, the same thing's going to happen. You're going to get a little weird little bit of jittering. And if this is something that doesn't bother you, then continue to use DLSS. I just wanted to point out though, although the technology is amazing, and I'm really glad that it's in Tarkov, we can actually see that a lot of people are going to actually be able to play maps they've never been able to play before. Another consideration to make before whether you decide to use DLSS or not, is to make sure you have the right settings. I did a lot of testing here guys and I realized that the more you load your GPU the better DLSS runs. So you need to play around with some of the settings and maybe consider turning a lot of things up. An example would be turning up your textures to high, turning up your shadows and trying out some settings like HBAO or horizon based ambient occlusion. I have mine on high or high plus colored and it's actually really really good because this adds a lot of load to your GPU and really makes DLSS worth it if you do want to run it. The best thing about running these settings higher is that you do lose a bit of fidelity when you run DLSS. So if you have your settings higher, DLSS isn't going to make your game look so bad. However, DLSS comes with a lot of drawbacks. We can see that the different packages will give you slightly better FPS, but it's not just the be all and end all absolute greatest setting ever. You have to test it for yourself. You've seen it here in my setup, so you actually have to try around some of the different resolutions and some of the different settings for yourself. You may find that for in some situations, you may be better off actually leaving it off and using the original settings anyway. The last patch 12.12.15 had a couple optimizations and the patch itself is running pretty good anyway. It feels like the game is actually in a better place at the moment performance wise, so that's something to consider anyway. But that's it for this video. Hopefully this video helped you guys make up your mind about whether you want to use DLSS or not. 
If you still have any questions about this video here today, consider jumping in the Discord down below. I've got a great Discord full of good people. If you want people to play with or simply just to chat to, or maybe get news about upcoming videos and participate in polls about what you'd like to see me make next, consider joining the Discord. Thank you guys so much for watching to the end. If you enjoy this type of content and you'd like to catch me live, there is also a link down below for my Twitch. You're more than welcome to come by anytime and ask me any questions that you may have about this video here or videos in the past. Thank you for watching to the very end. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.